We have another eclipse coming up across part of the country. This time it's of the solar variety. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're talking all things partial solar eclipse. It's happening on March 29th. It's not going to be as widespread as the Great American Eclipse that we saw last year. It's going to be for a select few, and it's going to be partial. But if you're in the northeast parts of Canada and parts of the Caribbean, it's still going to be something worth watching. And we're going to break that down to the course of the video. If you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. We talk all things weather and science on this channel. Stick around at the end. I'm going to give you a few things to watch for during this partial solar eclipse and talk about how to stay safe. Uh, side note, you need the special glasses or some kind of solar filter to watch this eclipse. So here we go. This is the path. It's going to get started early in the morning in the Arctic Circle and then work its way down towards the Hudson Bay into parts of Southeast Canada, into Quebec, into Newfoundland, into Nova Scotia, into New Brunswick, into the Northeast part of the United States, and then work its way into part of the extreme Eastern Caribbean, uh, just a sliver of Puerto Rico, the Northeast side gonna be included in that. And then it's gonna work its way across the pond and then exit on uh, the Russia, Siberia side. So it's gonna follow kind of a weird and chubby path, if you will. If you're Remember, the uh, 2024 Great American Eclipse was that very narrow line of totality. And again, we're not going to get totality on that one. So it certainly takes away a lot of the aura of the eclipse. But again, it is something still pretty cool. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go look at some times here from select cities. We'll go in a little more detail coming up in just one second. But here is this very, very, again, wide kind of eclipse path. And remember, it's going to be a partial solar eclipse. So we're never going to get that diamond ring effect. We're never going to be able to see that corona from the sun, the sun's atmosphere. It's more of like the Pac-Man deal the entire way through. So here's the deal again coming through. All of these times are in your local times. So we have ADT and then we have EDT for Eastern Daylight Time as well. So for instance, uh, in Quebec, we're starting things off at 639. Now, in our part of the eclipse in Canada and the United States, the eclipse begins with the sun already below the horizon. And I think that adds kind of a coolness factor, again, if you have the specialized glasses, because the sun is going to come up in the areas that can see this eclipse with that Pac-Man shape. There's going to be a bite taken out of the sun as it comes up. These times are for the maximum portion of the solar eclipse. And we'll take a look at the percentage eclipsed in just one second for a select few cities. Halifax, this is starting at 7 a.m. local time, or I should say this is peak at 7 a.m. local time. It's peak in Boston at about 6.31. It's peak in New York City at 6.54 in the morning. It is peak towards Ocean City, Maryland at 6.49 in the morning. And again, uh, shortly thereafter in Washington, D.C., it's just going to be a sliver, as you'll see in just one second. The greatest portion of the eclipse where the moon is taking that bite or appears to take a bite out of the sun is going to occur right down the center of this very elongated red shaded blobby area that I have drawn on your screen for you. To give you a little more context in this, here are a little, a little for the select few cities anyway, a little more um, of the story, if you will, the peak when it ends and then the percentage of the sun that's actually going to be eclipsed. Again, nobody this time around gets 100% of the eclipse where you can see the earth or the sun's atmosphere, the sun's corona, and uh, where it gets completely dark and things like that or nearly completely dark. But in Edmonton, New Brunswick, we will see our peak eclipse at about 722. It's going to end at 817, 86% uh, at peak will be covered. So a nice big Pac-Man bite uh, out of the sun, 86%. In Quebec, it's more like 90%. So we are close, but even again, just for reference for the next time we have a total solar eclipse. And again, this one is partial. Uh, even if you're 99.9% .9 eclipsed, you don't get that cool corona, um, the awe of that once in a lifetime bucket list thing of seeing the, uh, the wispiness of the sun's atmosphere in our sky. Bangor, Maine, 623 is our peak. The eclipse will continue until 712. And remember, I don't have a start time on this because it's already going to be in progress as the sun comes above the horizon. So I put peak when it ends, and in Bangor it ends at 712. We will have 79% of the sun eclipsed uh, of the uh, from the moon. New York, New York, New York City, 646 is the peak. 
Uh, it ends, it rolls around until 7.04. Only 21% of the sun is going to be blocked from our vantage point. Philly, what's going on? 6.51, we will see peak, and you see the time between peak and when it ends is also much shorter as well because we are further removed from that path of greatest eclipse, if you will. Can't say path of totality because we don't have totality in this instance, but 7.03, our, our uh, eclipse is going to come to an end. Only 11% of the sun will be covered up. And then Washington, D.C., uh, this will go really through central Pennsylvania as well. 6.59 is our peak eclipse. You see the eclipse only lasts uh, one to two minutes there with only 1% of the sun uh, covered. So it's going to be a very, very short lived thing. Again, you see the uh, those solar glasses. If you still had them left over from last year, you will need to use those to view the entire eclipse. When you're talking about a total solar eclipse, you can take the glasses off for a very short time when the moon completely covers the sun from our vantage point. But again, that is not going to happen in this eclipse. Just generally speaking here, this is when we're talking about a solar eclipse. Uh, unlike the last time where we had that nice giant lunar eclipse in the morning across most of North America, uh, the earth was in between the moon and the sun. Now we have the moon moving in between the earth and and the sun. So it's going to be the moon's shadow cast on the earth, whereas that lunar eclipse, if you're with me, uh, it was the earth's shadow. We can see the sun rises and sunsets projected on to the moon. That's why we get that blood orange color, as we talked about in uh, one of our earlier videos. So there is the, in a nutshell, what a solar eclipse is. And you'll see again the earth's shadow being, or the moon's shadow, I should say, casting the shadow on earth, starting at this vantage point anyway, from the Arctic Circle just about, and then going all the way down into the extreme eastern uh, Caribbean, and then exiting into Russia and through Siberia as well. Here's kind of the cliff nose version of that. You have the sun. Coming up, because of its location relative to Earth, it would appear, even though the moon is so much smaller, that it covers up the sun completely. We all know it doesn't. The moon is much, much smaller than the sun, of course, but it's that uh, relation to the distance from Earth to the sun. That's why we get that, and then we get the moon to project its shadow onto the planet Earth itself. So again, we are going to get the partial variety of that. So there's still some cool things to look for uh, during a partial solar eclipse. So some of my notables here, look for the eclipse projected on the ground. Now, this would be cooler if we had leaves on the trees because that's what I think the real cool part of this is. Uh, those leaves act like a solar filter. Of course, it is March. It has been cold. I doubt we have any tree in bloom in the Northeast and in parts of Southeast Canada. Um, nonetheless, uh, you can kind of mimic this by taking out a strainer or a colander or something with holes in the bottom of it going into your driveway or parking lot and then holding it out during the eclipse and you will see the uh, the Pac-Man. I always call it Pac-Man shape. Uh, the, the moon taking the bite out of the sun, the eclipse projected on the ground. So that's how you can mimic that since we don't have the leaves on the trees in the Northeast and in Southeast Canada. This one's going to be cool, I think, because... It's already going to be the eclipse is underway prior to the sun rising. So you're going to see the sun rise, not completely full, especially whenever uh, where you're closer to the maximum eclipse in the extreme northeast, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, certainly New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec. That's where it's going to look really, really cool. The sun is going to come up like it has a bite taken out of the sun. Um, it's also going to take a little bit longer to light up. And for the temperature to warm things up, of course, because we are blocking some of that solar radiation. Now, it's not as extreme as if it would be um, starting while the sun is already above the horizon. Uh, but certainly, it's going to have a little bit of an impact for that. Uh, some tests that I've done with the thermometer out on a rooftop during the last couple of eclipses. Um, if you were during peak heating or into the early afternoon when the eclipse came through, you would see the temperature drop three, four, five degrees. And in totality, at some places, uh, it's been recorded the temperature drops anywhere from 8 to 10 degrees. Again, it's not going to be as extreme there because it's in the morning where we're starting out at the coolest possible temperature of the day. Um, and again, we're not seeing that totality, but still, uh, both of those things are going to happen. And I think all of that is really cool and certainly a good consolation prize to not having a total solar eclipse. So there you go, guys. Make sure, again, you are wearing the protective glasses, if you have them left over from last year, it is never okay to look at the sun with your naked eye in any capacity. So make sure that you have that protection on. If you're using welder's glasses, number 13 or higher, it's still recommended, though, that you have the NASA-approved um, 
solar glasses. Like you see this gentleman in the background wearing, although the banner is covering it up, but he has those uh, cardboard glasses with the big solar film on there. Um, and again, just make sure they are on for the duration or you make your stay at home filter where you can project that and just hang out into the driveway or the backyard and, and watch it on your DIY homemade solar projector. Again, not a total eclipse, but certainly still noteworthy and still, I think, pretty cool to go out and try to see this. Thank you a ton for watching. If you found this content helpful, again, we talk all things weather, and every now and then we get into the astronomy realm because I personally think that's really cool. If you're into that, we love to have you on board and join this, uh, the best weather team on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.